There are two kinds of people in this world. The people who fail to do what they know they should, and those who keep doing things they know they shouldn't. Guess what? You're both. Hi, I'm your host, life and business coach, Marcy Barker, aka your loving kick in the pants. In this podcast, I'll teach you the six steps of my accountability code that will help you wake up with clarity and show up with aligned action steps that make follow through easy and peaceful. All right, let's jump in. Hello, my beautiful people. I just got back from a conference I have attended for the fourth time. It is called Secret Knock. And it's called Secret Knock because they don't tell you anything about it. They don't tell you the location. They don't tell you who's going to be there. They don't tell you who the speakers are. They don't give you an itinerary. They don't do anything. And they say that it's the most valuable conference that you can't attend. (laughs) And the reason... I got to attend Secret Knock is because I was invited to it years ago. And it's a conference that I explain to people being like very bougie and flashy. Like you, you'll meet celebrities there. In the past, there's been Joe Dispenza, Marissa Peer, Gary Busey, Brian Smith, who is the founder of Ugg Boots, the guy from Roblox who created this sound. Oof. And Coolio did a private concert one time. So it's really cool. And I just got back from it. But my experience this time was a little bit different. And I wanted to share a lot of my notes that I took because I feel like every time you go somewhere to learn something, you're going to receive what you need to hear at the time. And I don't want to say that my experience was underwhelming, but compared to other events, I'm just in a different space this year. And if you guys don't know, (laughs) I cut my hair off. I donated it and I've been like really sad. (laughs) I had no idea that I was going to feel so emotional about my hair, but to put it short, I just have felt ugly, which is not a normal emotion for me at all. And so going to a conference where I was like, everybody's hot, they're a celebrity. I'm like, I just want to hide in the background. And I also had in the past friends go with me, my same friends, and none of the three friends could come this time. So I really was like by myself. So the conference was great, but the way I showed up, I'm taking full responsibility, is just, it just was not the same as in past years. Here's another thing, okay? <laughs> Here's another thing that makes a difference. At the Secret Knock, they have this thing called the Tub of Love, and it is just this massive tub that accumulates prizes, okay? So Greg Reed is the person who puts on Secret Knock, and he'll throw in, like, here's a TV, here's a bike, here's a kayak, and then people from the audience are like, I'll donate my courtside seats to the LA Lakers games for this day, and other people are like, I'll donate two round-trip flights anywhere in America. Like, so it's it's huge, okay? And the Tub of Love, every so often, they announce what the value is of everything that's been donated. So this year was like, I don't know, three three hundred and five thousand dollars worth of stuff. And here's how they decide who wins this one tub of love. There's one winner for the tub of love. And throughout the conference, they throw out dollar bills. Like you ask or answer a question, they'll come by, they give you a dollar or you're dancing. They'll just like throw out dollars. And the person who wins the tub of love is the person who has the dollar bill with the correct serial number on it. So in the past, okay, you guys you guys know me. I'm very extroverted. I can be very fun and out there and I have no problem dancing, you know, doing the worm on stage, hula hooping, like volunteering for all the crazy things. And in the past, I've always like fought for dollars. I'm like, if they're throwing them out, I'm running over there and I'm snatching up as many dollars as I possibly can. And my daughter's always like, where'd you get all these $1 bills, mom? Well, it's because I'm trying to win the tub of love. So this is my fourth time coming to the conference and I have not won the tub of love and so this time I was like I just am ugly I'm just gonna hide in the back and I don't want to even like try and get dollars (laughs) so for reference in past years I've collected 60 to 70 dollars every single time and this time I think I collected like 32 and honestly that was like I got 16, not trying very hard. And then the last day I changed my mindset a little bit. I sat up front and I I doubled the ones, but I just had this attitude of like, I'm not going to win because I don't win and I'm ugly. (laughs) I'm just being honest. This is how I feel felt showing up. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you some of my biggest takeaways because like I said, whenever we go into a situation or we learn things, you're always going to get the messages that you want to receive or that you want to hear. And I feel like I got what I needed, even though 
in the past, it's been a lot more. There's been a lot more that I could absorb and consume. And I think this year I was just in a different space where I just didn't have the capacity to go all out in the ways that I have in the past. So the first one that I want to lead with, um, there was a woman who was up on stage and I'm sorry, her name is not with me anymore. I can't even remember it. I had lunch with her last year. And so I got to know her a little bit and I was a little bit intimidated by her because I'm like, this lady, like she can say it how it is. She's very direct and almost like not really pushy, but like if you say something, she's going to have an answer for it. And you kind of don't want to disagree with her (laughs) because you might be a little bit scared of of what she might say. And you're anyway, so she was up on stage this year and she was just being very direct and she was saying that people work with her because they get stuff done and I was like I can relate to this because my clients are very much like that and she said if I have to push people like we don't work together very long like we just are not a good fit if I have to push you and push you and push you and so she was coming across very much like I'm gonna get you to get stuff done and there's no bs we don't waste any time we don't mess around so as I'm listening to her I was like I want to be like that but at the same time it seems like kind of scary and so every time there's a speaker they always ask you have any questions and so at this point I'm in the front row you know I'm ready to consume what I can from the front row and I asked her a question I said when you're so direct and you really value execution and implementing I said where does grace and compassion fit in and her answer was so spot on she said if you deliver your answer without grace or compassion it comes across as judgment and I was like yes that makes so much sense and I didn't realize until she reminded me of that 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 is one of my superpowers of the reason why my nickname is your loving kick in the pants and not just kick in the pants and I also had to take that little bit of humble pie (laughs) and realize I needed to be more compassionate and graceful with myself in that moment because I'm not performing as high as I would want to in this situation because in past years, I'm like, put me in front every single time. Give me the mic every single time and I will meet everybody. I'll take pictures with everybody. But this time it was not like that. And I had to remember like I can be loving to myself and I have to apply that grace and compassion because I'm not here to judge myself and I hope that you guys recognize that too that anytime you do feel judged ask yourself where the grace and compassion is and if you're not getting it from somebody else then are you able to give that to yourself so I thought that that was really really cool and just a really good reminder of when it comes to being so in your face and getting stuff done and being accountable and working on implementing and executing things like it has to include the grace and compassion and the only way to really do that is to understand more of what's going on and you are the only one that has a full picture of how you're doing and that makes a lot of sense hey listeners the message of waking up and showing up is yours for the taking in fact it's free I've recorded my entire audiobook and I'd love for you to consume it between episodes. Head to marcybarker.com to get instant access to the accountability code wake up and show up. All right, let's jump back in. So another thing that somebody said, oh, it was kind of funny because after the conference was over, I went and played tennis with my friend Mac and Mac, I met him the first year and he works with Pfizer. He invented... Zoloft and he came up with the Z pack, which is the three day antibiotic pack. And then he also helped invent fast acting Viagra. So Mac, he he asked me if I wanted to go play tennis afterwards. And it was, it was really fun and we had a good time. And when we were in the car, I was riding with Greg Reed. He's the organizer of all of Secret Knock. So we're riding in his Rolls Royce. Okay. I've never been in one of those. You guys are like over $200,000. It's kind of crazy. But Greg was saying how a lot of the people, the speakers were talking about being vulnerable and having a place to be safe. And he just made the joke, like the only people who cried on stage were men. (laughs) And I was like, that is actually really funny because we're talking about the roles of men and women and how there should be a balance between being masculine and feminine. And he was like, all the dudes cried on stage. So one of the men who cried on stage, he said, just because I'm hurting doesn't mean I'm weak. And this was also a 
kind of a gut punch for me because I was like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling like, eh, I'm not really doing that great, you know, and my thoughts of like my hair is gone and I'm ugly, which, which again, you guys, is I understand is a first world problem. I totally understand that. Um, And I've also talked about it with a few people who understand how I feel. You, if you guys have ever chopped your hair off, you know the feeling and we could probably have a whole nother podcast episode about that. But this quote and this guy reminded me just because I'm hurting doesn't mean I'm weak just because I'm dealing with something right now does not take away all of the amazing things I've done in the past nor does it take away from what I'm capable of doing and so I've had to tell myself like my awesomeness was not in my hair like at all but (laughs) it was interesting how much credit I gave myself because of what I liked what I saw in the mirror and I actually posted this in a mom's group a a little while ago that I said I understand this is a first world problem but I'm I'm like kind of sad about my hair and I'm not really sure what to do and I'm not fishing for compliments and I need just a reminder that it's gonna grow back or you know what would you do sort of thing and somebody commented and said hair holds memory and there's so much in the hair that you chopped off that's not a part of you anymore and it's gonna take time to release and so I think I'm still just going through that releasing period I surely do not want it to take two or three years you know I don't want to feel like my hair has to be at a certain length to get back to a point where I really love what I see when I look in the mirror and honestly so many women in that mom's group commented they're just like it's just not a flattering cut like (laughs) you need layers you need some color you need some volume and that all of that I'm like yeah I can agree with because I am so low maintenance guys I do not know how to do my hair and I think that's why long hair has always been great for me because I'm like I can straighten it or I can curl it or I can braid it and that is enough So it was just, it was interesting to get a new perspective, but the comment that stuck with me the most is like, there's a part of me that doesn't exist in this physical sense anymore. And it's okay to give myself patience as I adapt. And you know, one other comment that was really nice. Some mom said her daughter has been a recipient of getting a wig because she had cancer. Oh man. And she just said that she was so grateful for her daughter to get hair. And she's like, you made somebody really, really happy. So that makes me feel better. Um, So I try to remember those things. And somebody else at the conference said, a mindset shift is only as good as its immediate implementation. Oh, that hit me too. Let me read it again. A mindset shift is only as good as its immediate implementation. This also made me think because... The process of the accountability code, wake up and show up, you guys know that waking up is all about the first part. So the reflection, the humility, and the planning. And then we don't get to implementing until we are showing up. So you have implementing and then commitment and feedback. So as I heard that quote, a mindset shift is only as good as its immediate implementation. I thought, what can I do right now? to understand my my awesomeness is not in my hair (laughs) what can I do right now to make the most of this conference even though it's different from past experiences and I think some of them the most immediate implementation I can do is to take a deep breath and and say an affirmation of something that I believe to be true or want to adopt to be true like my my awesomeness is not in my hair and obviously that would need a little bit of reworking so the word not is in the affirmation but it did again, make me think twice, like, what am I here for? And what do I want to get out of this? Because a lot of times, you guys, when we feel like we're in a rut, or we feel like we're not performing at our optimal level, I feel like there's got to be that feedback or reflection that helps us pinpoint what the resistance is. So one of the last things that I heard that I thought was really, really cool is that certain patterns come with certain choices. And there was an acronym that Greg said, and it was CPC, and it was Clues, Patterns, and Choices. And he talked about, you know, if I go out with a woman and a clue is she's late once, and then she's late again when I go pick her up. Well, first I had a clue that maybe she was, you know, taking a little bit long to get ready. But if I go to pick her up every time and she's she's late all the time, well, that's a pattern. Well, then comes the choice. Do I want to deal with this? Is this something that I want for the rest of my life? Or is this something I'm going to say, hey, this is not for me. You can never be on time. And he respects his time. So he had to decide. Um, When he said the CPC, that's when I wrote down certain patterns come with certain choices. And so when I recognize that I'm not in the best 
state of mind or, you know, the the optimal pattern of functioning or producing. I wanted that reminder that certain patterns come with certain choices. So if you're going to lay in bed longer and scroll YouTube or Instagram, then that's going to come with certain choices. You know, one of my favorite quotes that I've told my clients, I used to say it a lot more in the past dealing with personal training and nutrition, but it still is 100% true now, is don't confuse freedom with a lack of self-control. And so when you think about certain patterns come with certain choices, if you are engaging in certain unhealthy patterns, then your choices are going to become limited to what that pattern is. So there were just a lot of great takeaways. But again, I mean, if you were going to look at somebody else's notes of somebody who attended Secret Knock, their notes are going to look much different. And again, you're going to get the messages that you're ready to receive. And I think that that's something we should all accept and take 100% responsibility for it. Don't be hard on yourself if you're not able to consume everything at a high level like sometimes you are. I think that if you just put yourself in a position to learn the next thing or to feel the next thing or to be ready for the next thing, I think that's enough. And I think that you would benefit from that. I would benefit from that. And we would be way more able to be accountable when we recognize the current expectations we expect from ourselves. So I hope that you enjoyed that. If you guys want to attend Secret Knock, let me know. You have to be invited, and I can certainly invite you. It happens in San Diego, usually in the spring. They're having another one this fall in Las Vegas. And don't ask me who's going to be there or who's going to speak because I don't even know. (laughs) I just know that it's a really great place for me to learn, make great connections, and to continue my mindset, my business within what my goals are. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next week for another episode of Your Loving Kick in the Pants. Hey friends, I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Your Loving Kick in the Pants. If you got any value out of this episode, I would love for you to drop me a review or share with a friend what you learned. All right, I'll see you next Wednesday for Your Loving Kick in the Pants.